It's Monday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, Nima Akasha Zibiri. Hello. Welcome back. Welcome, Welcome back. Welcome back. back. Welcome back. Welcome How back. are you guys doing, Nima? <laughs> How you been? I'm grateful to God. I had a busy, fun filled weekend with my children. Oh. We visited family. Yeah, I'm still very, a bit, a bit, little bit jealous of Nima's relationship with certain family friends and family members. <laughs> I'm okay. We spend the night at Miriam's, not my, not Miriam. Yeah, that Miriam. Yeah. yeah. We spend the night and he remembered his auntie and he was all cuddling. And then we went to Miriam's and I ate for all of you, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. I covered up, I drank for all of you. I had so much fun. That's nice. Thank you, Miriam, for being such a beautiful host. Aww. Oh, so thank you. You're so sweet. <laughs> and I was a girl's night out, right? Was a girl's night out. Yeah, yeah. 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 But Imran was there yeah. and he showed Imran why. Was... Boys were not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Top I think you look good in those your meetings. Uh, I was gossiping, minding other people's business. <laughs> How are you doing, Top How was the weekend? It was eventful. Yesterday was the 50th of um, Fasali Yadisoya, who was like um, a coach and mentor to me. I learned public speaking from him. I've gotten huge platforms through him. And yesterday it was mega fun. I do, I'm not a car person. But it was given. It was given the car for his birthday, Aww. and by I his know, wife. No, by his team of the people Indeed. he has groomed, mm. and like when you see them, like I know he has groomed people. Even I can testify to that myself. So and they contributed the um, Lexus, brand new Lexus, something, something like it's the latest Lexus, wow. like all those big big cars. You know, it just felt really really good that wow. people. You, if you do your good. You might, not, you might not get it in your 30s and 40s. It might seem like, oh, you are doing good. But if you keep at it, the people you have groomed in the years past, And interesting, for the fellow drove to a suit, got the car. Yeah, yeah. And now, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where, 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 yes, where yeah. mentees are showing up yeah. for their yeah. people. That's fantastic. Well done. It was really good. So I had fun dance. Anything else? No. I don't just, so you dance? Yeah, yeah just. Ah. Yeah, my hair is back. Ah. Ah. I'm not yeah. seeing it. Is she posted? Oh, wow, I'll go check yeah, it out. Like <laughs> Hi, Mario. Fine, as you all know, it was my That's, that's, it's only Mariam that can think of this kind of ideas. <laughs> oh, we have to run, unfortunately. Uh, no. no. You just started. We are no. Mariam, how was me. your We have to <laughs> run. <laughs> we have two minutes. Oh, you can see the time. My week was great. I had a lot of exams, tests. I had a lot of um, papers, presentations, group work. So all week, back to back. Well, it's called an intensive week. So Monday through Friday. Like back to back, you're having these presentations. Mm -hmm. so your schoolwork, you're online, you're researching, you're presenting, oh. you're writing paper, you're typing. Ah, well, this is where. You, you had time to answer for one of my colleagues. Single, 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 the kind of men that reach out to her were not again like that. So she said, I'm real pleased to call, call for going to get married and finish. <laughs> this is normal. So, okay, we have to go on a break. It's Monday. There's so much to talk about. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Man. All right, we're going to start with the punch. Petrol landing cost hits 232 naira. Subsidy rises to 5.5 billion naira daily. <laughs> FG widens revenue base, plan taxes for global tech giants. Picture here of um, people boarding at um, 
in, in Bangladesh, actually, they're, they're actually burning a jetty, really, really crowded. And they're worried about the spread of COVID-19 continuous in India. Last month, officials absconded with my bleeding wife. So 150,000 Naira, this businessman. Nigeria now a disputed project. Stop fresh loans. Um, Akito and others tell World Bank. Article Group 1's ex-VP, PDP's consensus presidential candidate. Protest continues as UBA claims APC tickets for Anambra government to pool. And uh, INEC projects 20 million new voters as CVR begins today. Okay. Let me take the human interest. Human story. interest, go ahead, so, please. Uh, this Dubai-based businessman, um, Jude Eze, says on Friday he was arrested by LASMA and um, in Akonjo area. He said he was in a car with his wife. She was bleeding, and so she didn't use her seatbelt. And the last month official stopped him, you know, and w um, got into his car and tried to and drove it away with his bleeding wife in it. He was explaining to them that it was because she was so ill, she couldn't use the seatbelt, and they didn't want to hear anything. He had, um, he said, 150,000 naira in an envelope and another 10,000 naira in the envelope. He said he tried to plead with them. They pushed him out of the car and drove off with it. And finally, he was called and he was said that he should come and um, pay so that he can get his car back. And I think he was asked for 35,000. He said when he got to his car, the one, um, the 30, the 150,000 was taken away. It wasn't there anymore. He said um, he finally took his wife to the hospital when you know, he sorted with them and the doctor was so upset with him, the wife had to be given um, blood in the hospital because she had bled so much mm. during the altercation with Lasma. And he's asking for justice. And if this man's story is true, I think it is really sad and, and so unfair and really callous of this Lasma official yeah. to have handled this the way that they did. Okay, the major headline, Nima. Yes, yeah, so, so based on um, this point reports, <laughs> We should have removed subsidies in uh, forever, but <laughs> <laughs> according to the point report, it says the expected retail price, that's the landing cost of petrol, should be 254 naira per litre. But with the current pump price, we are offsetting about 92 naira per litre each time we buy petrol at 162 naira per litre. And because of that, our subsidy payment has gone to over 500 billion. Uh, 5 billion daily right. consumption based on daily consumption and we know that this is this consumption cannot be explained as nine, as the consumption within the country you know. mm -hmm. there's always border ex, uh, you know uh, sales of across border sales of petroleum products and we, uh, we, uh, let me quickly add that or would you add the silver story okay. to it yes, so, so the, the minister, minister of state for um, of state for petroleum had also talked about um, the, the need to deregulate. He says, really, when you look at this subsidy, it does not favor the man on the street. Mm -hmm. That it favors the it looks people. like it favors First the man of all, on the street, but it he even it. says, he says for the fuels that the poor man on the street use, like um, kerosene is deregulated, um, diesel for you know tr trucks that transport food is deregulated, but petrol that used for generators and things like that, which is more like the big big man's mm -hmm. oil. It's still being subsidized. And most of the people that enjoy from this are also scammers, people that have scammed governments of billions yeah. of naira or trillions of naira, he says. You know so now. he doesn't. That's what so I'm saying. Not, not so it's not that. new no. information, yes. it's what we know. He's but he's saying that the man on the street doesn't even understand. They think it's them enjoying this thing that yeah. we need to start. The man on the street needs to stand up and, and fight for the that Bismarck Rani has also said that this rising payment is what is stopping infrastructure mm. in the oil sector because we need to regular. We need to get the subsidy that we're paying right now to actually invest that money into infrastructure. You're going to take one more statement. Yes, point. I want to take the story of um, protests that happened in Kwara State based on the fact that um, gunmen kidnapped a businessman that sells phones within the community and killed his pregnant wife. So apparently they were going back home oh. and they, they were trying to kidnap the man. But the wife was screaming and shouting for help. And in order to shut her up, she was shot dead and she was a pregnant um, woman. The, the kidnapped man, the CP of Kwara State, um, what's the name? The Ajayi, SP Ajayi, Akisomi, hasn't been able to confirm the story. He said there was a kidnapping. They haven't confirmed the details of the story, but they are going to investigate. The protesters went to the Oba's palace, and, and their protest was that they need to improve his, the security challenges mm. within that community, because he's a known man that sells right. fairly used phones, so he's a popular figure. Finally, the chairman that. of INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, has told us that the continuous voter registration starts on today. 
And that, if you recall, they had actually created 56,872 additional polling units across the country. And that uh, they're, they're going to have 20 more applications being processed for the CVR. That's the continuous virtual registration. But the idea is to get more people. According to them, they've deployed 5,346 officials to 2,673 registration centers. So the idea is to get everybody to go out there to go and get your voter's card. Because all our speaking on social media, nya, 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 everything at the end of the day <laughs> ends mm. with your voter's card. Yeah. That's, the, that's the real one. language. So True. they're saying it has started today. It's going to be gone for a whole year yeah. to third quarter next year. Mm -hmm. so you have no absolutely excuses. no excuse. We'll continue to remind Nigerians. Yes. Maybe that's our, as our, as, as, uh, as our day goes by, goes by. The nation, major headline. There's no major headline. But the speaker advocates urgency, urgent power devolution. No basis for Avengers threat, says Buhari. Sylvia, sustained subsidy killed all refineries. Okay. Story. Let me just add to that because we're running off so that Topper yeah. could take a story and punch. So um, he said something about, which I found interesting, you know, where everyone is saying, oh, Dangote Refinery is going to come in to um, start business and may relieve us. But he says that it will be tougher with a subsidized economy for Dangote to sell his products here because he'll be selling at a loss because he's selling at a, in a subsidized market. And that's the problem with all the other refineries that we have. If they were to produce at the going market rate in Nigeria and then sell into a subsidized market is not commercial, um, commercially viable. So that's why most of the, um, the refineries have gone, you know, bad or, you know, they're not maintained mm. properly. So that's the business right. angle we need to look at. Concerning well. devolution of power, the speaker, Honorable Bajabia Mila, had said that um, by July 16th, we'll have the review of the electoral law, the amendments of the electoral law, that's good news. And also he has said that we all agree that the 64 items on the executive leave is making the federal government top heavy. Therefore, he agrees that there has to be devolution of power. And that, but, the, but again, as they have said, is the definition of restructuring that is not clear. So the, the restructuring means different things to different people. So mm -hmm. according to him, he agrees totally that there has to be restructuring that must be done properly, legally. And that um, at this point, government will be better served if the states are more empowered yeah. uh, and therefore they are, they are, as they empower the local government to be empowered and then the people can be feel, can feel governed. Now, the, right now the center is too heavy and that we need to de 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 devolute power as soon as possible. We all agree, it's just when are you doing it? Devolution of power is one thing we're talking about for a long time. Mm -hmm. I want to see the story of um, no, there's no need for Avengers. The presidency speaking through his spokesperson, Fred Madeshino, addressed the call which happened over the weekend. We are the Niger Delta Avengers claimed they, 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 they threatened to cripple the entire oil sector. Mm. That they have made their demands known and it hasn't been it hasn't been dealt with, and that they are going to deal with all the oil infrastructure we have, as well as citizens of Ijo that are fraternizing with the government at hand and not dealing with the issues on ground. The national statement was that we've already the, this, there's a meeting that took place between the president the Ijo National Congress, as well as Niger Delta Youth. Um, and the meeting was, they had a 10-point agenda, yeah. and they were already addressing the issues. Mm. One of the key things they wanted was that oil, oil um, allocation of oil wells should be given to Ijo people. Yeah. Then there was a launch for Ijo Ogoni cleanup under this administration that hasn't been fully implemented. The president said they will look into why the cleanup hasn't taken place, and the ministry, mini, Minister for Environment should work on it. But I remember when they launched this thing, it was hailed as... The, the vice president went to Ogoni Line and said, we're going to clean up the yeah. pollution in that area. Yeah. Apparently, it hasn't been yeah. um, successfully and the done. Uh, when, we, when, we, when we come back, we'll take Sun. Because with that, the 10-point agenda that was taken, mm -hmm. the president responded to every single thing. I even thought oh. suddenly the president seemed to have resumed office. Because remember, <laughs> our guest yeah. was like, he hadn't resumed. Mm -hmm. He actually responded to every single item. But I felt additional shouldn't have used the word unnecessary. Because mm -hmm. these are people that have gone to meet the president. And he responded to them properly. And we'll take those, those points when we come back. Mm. But the, the, the words you use mm. can actually ignite Inside. or, 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 or dampen um, the tension that people already feel. If you say that yeah. the Avengers uh, position was unnecessary, mm. that's a bit too heavy. The president's mm. already doing the right thing of engaging and addressing every single yeah. point that was raised. Yeah, All right, let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll take the point, 10 point agenda, the United Delta raised with the president. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Thanks for staying with us. Moving on now to Daily Suns. Buhari begs Niger Delta Avengers. ESM, that's the Eastern Security Network, whose Oduma threatens to bomb Imo forests. 40 oil firms in possession of dormant refinery licenses. Constitutional review, speakers root for state police. Anambra Guba, no APC primary election held on Saturday, says Ngigi. All right, the major headline, Nima, you're going to take a few of the points yeah, uh, that uh, the president no, had. Not, not, not the point, I just wanted to agree on the unnecessary, because the president just issued, sort of released what he, his address at the meeting he had with Niger Delta um, leaders. leaders prior to that threat that was issued by the Avengers that they would take over. I felt that the Avengers, are, were, their demands were unnecessary at the time. I feel that the Avengers have always been existing. And, you know, because they've been, how well do they know their region and what exactly are the demands that they should be demanding? Because when we monetize our demands, we monetize our claims, they will create a Niger Delta Commission, they will create a Niger Delta Ministry, and all these people will just be giving money and money will just be going out. Some people, a few people will get enriched and nothing will but happen. Let me, let me so list their demands things. should be about development. So number one, oil spillage, which is really important. The president said, I'm equally concerned about the risk of environmental degradation and that region has directed the Minister of Environment to ensure and the projects are implemented. He also said that um, the issue of uh, restructuring, which was also raised by them, well, he said that the regional constitutions have, com have concluded and that the House will definitely come with a result and then they be begin to see how properly it can be restructured. And secondly, they talked about the um, creation of states, which he said that is a local government thing and something that the House the of Assembly said, yeah. would have to handle that. National Assembly would have to handle that. Mm. He also mentioned um, operational licenses, which he agrees. He said, I completely agree with your call to allocate operational licenses for marginal fields for job people. He agrees with that, and that will be done. Uh, issue of fair and balanced appointments to reflect federal character. He said that, according to him, he, has, he, he feels he has, he has done it, but however, they will continue to review and ensure um, federal character. And, and he said, he mentioned the NDDC issue, saying that the corruption is currently being um, investigated, that once the results are out, that would then take the decision, to not inform, inform the decision, decision that they take next. But for now, let the investigation so the be NDDC, concluded. So given NDDC, that that's why it looks like the threat, mm -hmm. this is after this message has been given. Yeah. So now since the threats are unnecessary, yeah, yes, because the threat threat came after. Let me yes. just add it to the report that, you know, we have about 40 oil firms in possession of um, refinery licenses on inactive. So the DPR issued a report in May that 68 refinery licenses have been approved, right. out of which 40, 40 of them are inactive and they named all the companies that, you know, carry out this. Right. Besides this, the cost of refining, let, let me just quickly put that, in 2019, Cardinal Refinery and Metrochemical Company only processed crude oil for one month. Right. Portacot Refinery only uh, processed for two months, February Ma and March. Wari Refinery, you know, uh, limited only processed a crude oil for in January, February, March, and May of 2019, and Kadira Refinery has operating right. deficit of 64.84 billion naira for okay. July 2019. These are, you know, part of what the issues that we are talking about. And because we do not refine here, all the byproducts that we know we create for the empowerment yeah. are given to other countries where we refine. All right, let me take the, uh, the story on Abbasanjo raises alarm yeah. about that. Just take it quickly. He's, it's a mentoring program um, meeting that he had with young people. Uh, mostly secondary school children, and he was just talking about the importance of um, managing population. He's talking uh, definitely. We all know how our population is increasing at such as you know alarming rates. Some people yeah. would say, but that we need to be able to harness um, this information and manage it properly the way India and China are doing, or else we will not get this socioeconomic um, impact, positive impact that we can benefit from such a huge population. That's basically it. The vice I'm just encouraging young people to be honest and have mm -hmm. integrity. Right. I think the story is in another paper. The vice president's on um, taxing Google and... We'll take that one. Mm -hmm. But uh, the governor of Imo State has threatened to bomb the Imo forest to fish out the unknown government threatening the peace of the state. And I think I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Moving on now very quickly to Vanguard. Let's find a story. Fuel subsidy must go to move economy ahead. Oh, really? Tell me something new. Hold your peace, Buhari Wu's Niger Delta militant. We discussed that already. Order AFG National Assembly to stop anti-press bill. Serap tells African Commission. Um, State of the nation, Nigeria, a questionable sovereignty. Akitoe others say. Supreme Court hears appeal to set aside $15 billion judgment against Nigeria. Others. Super TV CEO's murder. We, cons we suspect conspiracy, hmm. says Ataga's family. Twitter ban social media most, most potent weapon for good and evil and must be regulated, says Bajabia Miller.
Our federal government's tax profits made by global tech, digital giants in Nigeria, says Oshin Bajo. Okay, let's take the Ataga family. The Supreme Court quickly. Okay, great. Um, a billion dollar um, judgment against Nigeria. So Petrol Union had sued the CBN and Union Bank for a check that the CBN and Union Bank are claiming was a, a, a dirt check or a fake check. Mm. Petrol Union issued a check of a company that was not in existence at the time when they issued the company's check in the UK. And also, the account for, from which the check was issued had you know, been closed at the time, that's in 1994. The company itself the, uh, had closed in 1989, and they issued a check for that amount at, that, to the Union Bank in Nigeria here, that Union Bank also you know, sort of did declaring on with the CBN and the money and how it should be done had been taken whatever excess on it. The Petrol Union is now suing them in Nigeria. They got judgment in the appeal court. And they are insisting that you cannot be suing on, an, on a non-existent company on a, on a fake check. They're asking the Supreme Court to vacate the judgment of $15 billion. Uh, million dollars. Okay. Our government supposed to pay. Any other story in Vanguard? Any other story in Vanguard? Well, I don't know. It's yes, the Ataga story. Yeah. Go ahead, hurry. So the Ataga family are uh, suspecting conspiracy uh, about the death. According to their... Uh, uh, um, one family member who was in, um, uh, mentioned in the Vanguard report, they have suspicion based on how the body of the victim was, you know, they had, they had rope ties on his body, he had a broken neck, according to the family. Huh. So they don't, they don't see the story of the young girl having a confrontation about rape and all of that with him does not sit well with the family. Mm. So the family has issued their own, who will speak for Ataga, because now um, all parties in this are speaking, but his, his own side of the story cannot be heard because he's dead. They are also suing and threatening to sue bloggers who have started conspiracy stories that are tying the wife to having a relationship with yeah. the girl. All sorts of conspiracy stories. But I think more importantly, the according to the family, everybody should just hold their horses right now. now while the investigation is ongoing, yeah. because they really need privacy to mourn their, exactly. mourn their loved one and then hope that the, the investigation is going on can get the they truth. Asking what the happened. police to even investigate further. They're asking that, are there other parties to this that they, you know, they should do okay. beyond the arrest of this mm. girl? Let's move on quickly now to the Nigerian Tribune. Epileptic power supply costs Nigeria's economy 10 trillion and loss annually, says World Bank. Who has that story? I yes, have it. So the Nigeria, this is um, the, this World Bank report through the past sector recovery program released the data which says the economy loses between 7 trillion and 10 trillion annually because of uh, power issues and that and that's about 5 to 7 percent of our GDP it also says that um, 22 million generators power about 26 percent of our households 30 percent of our medium small and um, um, enterprises which is eight times more than the national grid do you get that so like Generating one, sets, yes, yeah. more than the, eight times more than the national grid. And he's saying that this is, of course, because of sub substandard infrastructure and operational in inefficiencies. And that um, all the economic challenges that, you know, has bede that's bedeviling our country right now and everyone trying to sort the problems and looking for a way forward cannot be properly tackled if you do not put the power sector in the right position. That putting the power sector in you know, in a viable working condition will help with many of the economic challenges that we're facing right now. So I know that this is information that we already have, that we know, and, but the question is why it's become so impossible <coughs> to, you know, sort the power sector out. All right, so we're going to take the point. It says, Buhari's successor, all eyes on 10 top contenders. Um, how Foreign Affairs Ministry legally spent 3.12 billion naira without National Assembly approval says audit report. This is quite as we tell our regular battle for APC soul in Oshun. All right, so the major headline, mm -hmm. this report by um, uh, this, uh, this, this company, um, The Point, they listed about 10 people who they believe are contending for the top man's position in 2023. And some of them are Ashwa Jibola Metinumbu, the vice president, um, Shiba Sarah Joe. Uh, interestingly, yeah, yeah, Bello's name keeps coming up. I don't know why, but they keep... Is keep, a top contender. Keep, I can see that. Everybody mm -hmm. feels that way. Yeah. You know, we have um, to, uh, Pastor Tine Bakare. We have um, uh, um, uh, Governor Ibukunle Amosu. And they, they, they quite a number. Even Atiku Abuka still made the list. Bukala Salariki, Salariki also Salariki, made the list. Yeah. Interesting. But it's an interesting read. And I think we should even do a show 
around this top, 10, this top 10 contenders. Who do pros we think pros. Nigerians would want for 2023? The pros and cons. Mm -hmm. What are the good sides? What are the bad sides? Look side? at these top 10 contenders. No, no woman in that. Imagine, oh, no, no woman. woman. Yeah. Top 10 contenders. Well, it'll be, it'll be really nice to... Which other story? No, no I have a story I've been waiting for. <laughs> we have to run. Let me really take story. my story. The vice president already had a, had a meeting over the weekend with... The Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, represented by the President Adeshino Adebayo. And summation, Nigeria needs money. Tech giants are making lots of money from Nigeria. Like, they are making numbers. Uh, that was the word. Incredible volumes here within Nigeria. And we must find a way legally to tax them, even if they don't have their offices within Nigeria. Ah. The, the Googles, the Facebooks, they make ah. money. I pay for Google ads and Facebook ads. Now, the government needs to tax um, the income they are generating from within our shores. I think it's a huge opportunity that should be legalized quickly, not just by... Nima, your story, your story. Okay, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, according to the, the, the debt management, management office, had some infractions that, you know, they, they budgeted about a uh, allocation of about 3.1 billion um, naira that they made for mi ministry to foreign missions without approval from the National Assembly. They also um, um, have documents to show that they used 1.6 billion for postings and returns of members of staff, which were unaccounted for an unauthorized payment of some of 419 million naira without approval again. And they had several other infractions: 600 million naira to three foreign missions, 394 million naira meant for the completion of the, the headquarters building. Um, it's 9.9 .9 million naira for one clothing allowance right. to staff of the ministry. All okay. of this they did outside the regular uh, due process. Uh, and the DMO says they've written to them, nobody have answered so far. Okay, that's all we can take on front page review. When we come back, we move on to our hot topics. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. to stay with us. So the Honorable Speaker, uh, Honorable Bajadir Mila, was speaking concerning the Twitter ban and regulating social media. And he was saying very clearly that we must begin to discuss and uh, see the need to regulate social media because social media can be used for both good and evil. Let me try to quote him verbatim. He says, I'm glad that the issue of social media regulation has come to the fore. Uh, it is important that, like everything in life, there has to be regulation. We know that social media is perhaps the most potent instrument that can be used for good and also for the negative. While we welcome the good, we must not uh, paper over the bad or the evil. And that's the position. So according to him, everybody has a right to be protected. They, we've been swamped with fake news, hate speech. And even recently, the Ataka family has said, listen, all these different news coming out of our family member is getting um, overwhelming. And they've asked the Nigerian to please allow the police to investigate because Different bloggers, different news are coming on social media. So the, our leaders are saying, maybe this is the right time to regulate social media such that everybody's rights are protected. What are your thoughts on this? You can call us on 081-270-53687. You can also call us on 091-390-7694. You can send messages on Facebook and also on YouTube. We'll be happy to read your messages. So we've talked about this issue of regulating social media on different ways, but... It's getting more and more, and I just finally get into to the reality that this um, platform could or should be regulated, especially because globally many countries are facing the same issue where the, the, the online platforms are being used in both negative and positive ways. So how best do you think we can go about this? And do you think Nigerians are ready to accept the possibility of regulating social media in this country? Who would like to go first? Nima, go ahead. Until you're affected, you, you disagree with regulation of social media. Until somebody picks up a fake story, carries your picture, puts your family out there, and makes a story that makes it sells them for profit without you having any right to even immediately report. So we have some regulations already existing. We have, um, we have our libel laws, we have our slander laws, we have defamation. 
and all of that, criminal and both civil. But it is not enough. There has to be mediate. So you remember the January 1 episode where we did the woman who's 3 billion, and somebody took my picture, left the story because the original writer of that story just quoted verbatim every of the host on your view and even acknowledged your view as the show of source yeah. in his write-up. So somebody now goes to his page, screen grabs this. This is an, a, a, an Instagram poster now. And posts my picture used by, you know, uh, TVC to, to while the story was going. Puts that story there as if it was my story. Mm. Makes money off it. So we go try to investigate. The person doesn't have um, a, 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 an open office. Yeah. Although I got his office, but we had, in fact, I cannot explain how I had to get the office mm. because I did it, in, in, uh, you know, off of um, the right way, eventually. <laughs> I had also had to, to find a way to get that person's office. There's no known name, no phone number, and that person made story that trended. It trended so bad that if it was my story, I wouldn't have a problem. At least I would just do rejoinders and all of that, but this is not my story. And I wasn't, it was a weekend, I would not have time for social media. Yeah. Every WhatsApp group had things to say about this. Mm. To the extent that my friends, family members were calling, ah, Nima, when did this happen? How will yeah. they allow this happen? I, I, I see that because so it's happened to me we, several times we too. Need so an immediate, we, we need an immediate place to go. We need somebody, we, Instagram for instance, don't just block the person and report the person's page. Somebody has, that person has to pay hey, for such yeah. a trend. Right. And somebody has to you. Um, I agree that um, they've abused the freedom to a large extent where one human being can have 20 accounts and human beings can have even up to 100 and make a story trend because they just want it to go viral. And they know that if 100 people tweet it or 100 people repost it, naturally it will just gather um, momentum. momentum like that. So we know that that should be checkmated. However, I have seen the policies that some countries have, have put in place to you know, sort of like structure regulate. social media and regulate it. And it is tantamount to you saying what we have with NBC, where some things we cannot say. That we know we ha I want to say, but you cannot say it because it's on national television. Same thing about social media. Social media has provided a platform for people to finally express themselves. We're not in a military rule. So when India created, and, and Nigeria doesn't have to copy India, we've had several policies that people have said are verbatim laws from India. So now, the India policy, for example, makes, puts, puts in a clause that the, gov the twi Twitter has, within 36 hours, to take down any post the government deems not fit. So now, it is led to the interpretation of the government to say, this, in this information is not good, this information is right. It's no longer something that there's a law, uh, there, there's, like a, there's, like a, there's a justice system to protest. So a critis criticism, a tweet can be a criticism of a fact. This road is bad. The government has awarded it several times and it hasn't been done. Fact, the government will say, no, this is not true. Take it down. And they will take it down. So how does my right to express my fact? Nima comes here stating for a fact what is going on in our road. Somebody can say what she tweeted about what's going on in our road does not, is, is inciting um, violence against the government. Take it down. So my worry is that we've had cases of abuse of power. We've, I didn't grow up inside a military rule per se. I didn't understand military when I was growing up. But my parents, people that have ex experienced military, understood what it meant not to be able to say your mind. And we are, my worry is that we are going to end up in that same space where our only platform for expressing ourselves has been gagged. We can't uh, express ourselves anymore. Okay, okay, let me come to you. Now. Yeah, so for me, I do, do not think it's a gagging per se. And if you listen to the tone of the um, honorable speaker, he's asking that it should be regulated. So this is not exactly that, you know, total ban like what we have now with the suspension. This, we're talking about social media going forward. And for me, I hope that it comes in this way, that we can have a physical offline place where you can get redress, mm -hmm. where you can report where prosecution can happen. Because it's all fine to be anonymous on, uh, and online and say all these you know, evil things that you can say and paint people black and sometimes cause people's death because people have committed suicide because you have put up a fake story about them and they're so ashamed to show their face in public, they take their own lives. There has to be a place where people like that and their families can go and get some form of redress. So it's important that we understand our freedom to speech, but we also need to understand the responsibility that it comes with mm. that freedom. We cannot, um, okay, just look at this particular story of this Ataga lady. So there's a picture of the 
perpetrator that has been going around and this South African model has come out to say, please, this is not this girl, this is me, stop tagging me. I, heard, I read Nigeria saying, I don't care what she says, I have already accepted that this is that person and I that's do. all I'm going to go with. So these are the sort of people that we are talking about, that for them is not about your truth, it's not about your um, well-being, it's not about your state of mind. It's for them about what pleases them as of right now. Oh. And, and it does not matter how you feel or what the consequences or the impact is on your life. So there has to be a yeah. court, a system where so, people can so, get so, justice. Okay, I'll come back to you, Nima, because I want us to put this in proper perspective. I know, I know something that Nima has always said here is that do we want a democracy or not? Because there have been cases where social media have been done for alleged good. For example, let's take the Baba Jesha. Story. So a girl was allegedly um, defiled by this adult. And we, because of social media, we were able to get the case. So that's a good thing. But the other part of it is that, okay, people still use the same social media to um, demonize this person, who we all know is at least allegedly guilty of this crime. But people are saying, why don't you let the courts determine that, okay, this man is guilty? Yes, we saw, yes, there's a need to push him out there to say, yes, this is the, this is the perpetrator, arrest him, do this. Yes. But do we want a democracy or do we want a banana republic? Do we want, do we want something that is, goes through the justice system or we don't? That, that's the decision I just so, must so make. Let me explain what social media, the extent they should stop. So a girl had been allegedly defiled. raped, defiled by this person seven years ago, and the setup was done and he put it out there, yes. make it popular and, level, and keep it alive till justice is found. Sir. Is saved, not create conspiracy or you know further destroy. Because we saw and a lot of people jump on the story and you know sort of take took took ownership of it, and the matter is in court. What we simply need to do is, so far in court, it's still in court. It's not been killed. Babadesh has not been released without trial. Prosecution is ongoing. That's what social media. That's the extent to what social media can do. The social media cannot become a court that can find Babadesh and guilty at any point. Mm. It still has to be a court. But you see people already finding guilty. In fact, Say they're going to kill him when he comes outside. Stuff like online. that, yeah. So you, such speech. Then there's also a part of social media that I find, I, I, I find annoying. I can't even believe it. Why do you have a social media page and you don't have a personality you can attach to it? Exactly. Yeah, that's true. That's so that, true. that's the extent we need the regulations. Mm. So if you have a social media page like the Mr. Only Nigeria person, Put your name, yes. your father's family name on it. Why? What yes. So we can yeah. trace you. Because no. why? Have the why? If you call out my family and say that I killed my child and had three billion in my account, I want to be able to find you, sue you, and get you arrested immediately. Yes. I don't want to go and dig through and some unauthorized ways to find you. Want to put out news? Do put out your chest. Put, yes. your put it with your full chest. When I say when I say something on the show, when your full chest. If I say something on the show. Yeah. Somebody will say it's Nima who said it. Yeah. That's why you're putting it on your page to trend. Yeah. Put your name, your father's family name, your entire family compound on it. I want to find you. Yeah, who let me go a break. When we come back, we'll take some calls on this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're still having this conversation on social media regulation. So we're going to do something after so the break. One of the things that I feel is very important is that the idea of social media is to provide a platform to express themselves. People. So I believe in the verification of people. I've seen some very irritating comments on my page, and I want to see who has the nerve to say this kind of thing. And of course, it's blocked, blocked, private, 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 nobody, no posts, zero posts. Mm -hmm. You know, so I understand the, that, that perspective that they are trolls and they are trolls and they are cyber bullying. So I feel we should deal with cyber bullying. We, sh we should deal with, um, um, what, Nima, what's the word? Where somebody, where, um, when, you, when you blatantly lie about the situation. Slander. slander. We should deal with slander. If you post a comment that is false, you should be prosecuted. And I believe we have laws dealing with that part already. The area I have issues with is where a law is saying that the government's representative can report to this social media handle and say, this person, what this person said is wrong. And it's not like an algorithm that is co-developed 
by both parties. Like uh, Nigeria co-developed an algorithm with another with um, whatever social media handle and say that any comments like this should be taken down. We will end up having China in our hands. Hmm. And that is what that that, that many democracies that we are, what we are saying are doing this. They are also modeling China, where you cannot say anything, no dissent, but no me, disagreement, let me, let me come no to, criticism. Let me, let, me, let me come to this point where our democracy is still quite fragile. We have an, it's not as strong as the Western democracies. So do you think, just talking, having a conversation, do you think where we are, we are still trying to get people to believe in the ideology of this nation who called Nigeria? We are still very fragile in our thinking and ideologies. Do you think the, the ability to give that freedom of expression will strengthen or weaken our democracy because we are there's a point in other countries where they did people didn't have that freedom of expression it took many years to get to that point where we begin to begin to believe in the american dream believe, believe in this ideology called the united kingdom but where we are as a nation we're so divided there's the, 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 the diverse views now our nationality is is so fragile so that we don't even understand how we are as a nation as a people so my point is that do you think it is time for us to allow this freedom of speech such that there is, there is little regulation at this point. If we don't express ourselves, we will plaster the issues, and the issues will not be dealt with. If we express ourselves, a, a government that wants to solve the problem will call us and deal with the problem. What I have issues with is the abuse of what is going on, but that expression will be stifled if we allow a law to go so, into power. Okay. So All right. it, it, for me as well, I think that... Um, it is not about stopping people from expressing themselves. Right. The government needs to also hear what the people are saying to understand how to, help the, how to help the people, in what ways that they can solve the issues. So it's important that people are allowed to express themselves. What we need to do is build an institution that is able to regulate without that independent of government or parties or the administration in power. You do not want it to be determined by a particular political party or political appointee today and then uses it as a tool to which hunt political opponents. That's not what we're asking for. Have an independent institution that people can go, even government, where it feels that um, someone has written a fake news concerning a particular government policy or yeah. an appointee, can go there to and get redress. Yes. That's what is important. In fact, first of all, would like this to be part of what is being uh, the conversation we're mm -hmm. having now with mm -hmm. Twitter and Facebook? Should include this issue of how we can actually identify these trolls, no. know who they are, so and you can have a physical building where you can report these things. You too. can have a private page, but the moment there's an issue of abuse on that page, it has to be the right. platform you. should be able to fish you out for the person reporting, yeah. yes. so that a court case can happen yeah. easily. Yeah. You, you don't want to be t at some point frustrated. Ah, can this person get away with this? Look, yeah. and the possibility of this person get away. Johnson, are you there? Thanks for calling. Yeah, I'm there. You're live. Go ahead, please. Good morning to you. Morning. Yeah. I, I would just want to say something. I don't know if any one of you follow what happened in the U.S. very well. Have you ever seen the CNN before? When they write somebody that went to kill a pregnant woman in, his, in, his, in her house. Have you ever seen it before in CNN? Have you ever seen it in BBC? that somebody went to strike someone down inside his car without not doing anything. But it's through social media that will get to know all these things. A policeman shot someone in Ukraine. The guy did not do anything. No news up to today that picked that issue. But it's through social media. Even the politician here in Nigeria, if we have not known some things about them, if not because of social media, so let's sit down and get to know the reason why and the purpose of this government are shutting all these things down. They don't want people to talk to express themselves. Something happened in South Africa. A, black, a, a, a white man killed a lady. He, I, I think maybe their girlfriend or so ever. No, 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 no TV station that picked that news. But was the neighbor that was videoing that thing from the window and they upload it to social media, to Instagram. That's what everybody gets to know. There are so many cases in court. Over 10 years ago, I have a friend that's been in prison because they said he stole the phone, and they didn't even find out it today, like seven years ago. He's still in prison. It's through social media we are trying to express ourselves. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. I mean, just I just made a fantastic position, because mm. the truth is that there have been lots of injustices that mm. have happened. 
that without social media, we would have mm -hmm. not gotten justice. No, no, no. So I agree with him. I do not disagree about the ability of social media to be an alternative means of news that helps people. What yeah, I'm saying is, what, even what the, um, the honorable speaker is saying is, regulate. Yeah. <laughs> Meaning is that if I am putting out a story that somebody has just been raped, I have the story. If I, I am called to be a witness in court, I will not back down and say, ah, me or Shejo. I will stand by that story. I am a willing witness. I will not at any point in time that because I have that story and I have the facts. But yeah. in Nigeria, you see people put out story and they will say allegedly. In fact, they will say as reported from and they eventually do not have the story. But you have put up a nice conspiracy on somebody. Look at this Atagas case, for instance. Some bloggers, social media platform again, wrote a nicely well put story that can sell conspiracy that tied the morning widow to this mother. And this person will not want to be known. You put your name there. So put your father's you name know, on you it. You know that, Nima, what you're saying is valid. We should, they, um, um, Google has a Google business. If you're a business, mm -hmm. you need to verify your business address. You need to verify your business name. Facebook has for business as well. I've submitted my CAC document on Facebook to be verified as a business on Facebook. So they do it for businesses, but they don't do it for individuals because who would fund the infrastructure of verifying everybody there? In developed countries, it's a different thing. You easily can say you have your social security number and they ask you, put in your social security number to verify who you yeah. are. But we don't have that infrastructure and we can't put the burden of verification of our lack of infrastructure on a different business. So right now, it will be a case of uh, Facebook and Twitter, and they should verify each person. Why? It's not be because for Google, it costs them, they know that I want to spend money, so they verify me. They pay to send it to my postal address. Sometimes when, I, when I'm reporting the situation, they'll say it is your own country's postal issues that is yeah, costing yeah. it. But so also, we have many infrastructural mm. challenges that are, that are causing bottlenecks. Of mm. course, we can say we don't want anybody to be private, or we don't want anybody to, we don't want false accounts anymore. We don't mm. want multiple accounts anymore. But the policy needs to be well thought of, not by our current crop of leaders who don't really understand social media. Look at our National <laughs> Assembly. They don't know it. It's not, it's not an okay, insult. Let me, let me, let me know it. to what Johnson was saying also, which is we need to find out the reason. So he's talking about it like there's an agenda about this uh, well, regulating. Yeah. And I know that in Nigeria especially, there's just this common distrust for government. Mm -hmm. And so I think this conversation of government regulating social media cannot be had with only government and government officials alone. Mm -hmm. You need to have um, st um, other stakeholders, people, youth representatives, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. and societies. We need to come up with a white paper for how it should be regulated. That's the only way we would know that it's all inclusive and it has no agenda. Let me take this call from Doe. Doe's been holding on. Are you there? Thanks for calling. Yeah. You're live. Go Hello. ahead, please. Okay. Uh, please, I, I want to talk. I, I'm a first caller. I've been Welcome to the show. For the past uh, a year now. <laughs> so I, I want to talk on the issue of. I want to talk on the issue of social the social media stuff like. Now, hello, can you hear me? Very clearly, please go ahead. Okay, now, uh, Morayo said uh, some people are using social media against other people. Please, I want to ask this question. Are the government not using social media? Uh, are the people on government not using government against all the citizens? Let's just be sincere with each other. Okay, now you are, we are just talking about how to regulate. How do you want to regulate this thing? Social media is good and is bad. She understand. Now, how do you want to regulate it that a, a, a poor man will be able to move along with it? Because most, most in Nigeria, we express ourselves through social media. Not everyone, like the Elijah said, not everyone can come out to express yourself. But through social media, most people can express themselves. Let's check out the issue of rape. Mm -hmm. How many people want to go to police station and go and report to police that they rape, yeah, if, uh, rape her? But through social media, they can express themselves. From there, you call them to the table. You, you talk to them one on one. You have some Joe. conversation with them for them to get the right. Joe, let me, let, me paint, let me paint this scenario, Joe. Imagine you're working somewhere, right? And you are falsely accused of stealing one millionaire. 
and then your employer or somebody who's family member to your employer, maybe his niece or something, creates a fake account, puts your picture there, and says, this man stole one millionaire from the XYZ, and puts it out there, and it goes viral. And they're not looking for you all over the place. What we are saying, we agree okay, okay. that let, the let, social media should ex will allow you to express. We also say that you should protect people like you from people who, like that, from them. people like that who will try to use you and paint you I, I, um, uh, uh, negatively in the society where you may be able to get any other job. Yes. That's, that's, that's what, that's now, what we're saying. What do you, what, I'd like to hear a response now, to that. Now, I make, now, thank you. I make measure of something that social media is all about good and bad. She understand? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a strong person that I must believe in there should be a solution. I'm a strong person in that way. But why do you want to regulate social media? You, you yourself that want to regulate social media. The people don't have trust on you. Okay, thank you very and much. You I, think I, I think I'll let it go there because yeah. Mayam already mentioned this. Like, the federal government will always be looked on in, the, in, the, in the, um, like they are trying to impose or yes, uh, um, this on them. Yes. That what she would advise is that we should bring in other groups, yeah. stakeholders, so that someone like a Joe Let's can believe you have the civil society, yeah. you have the ministers, yeah. you have the um, imam, everybody saying the people, same thing that we must do something to the social media. People who understand comments. it and know it. Mm. So it's a different thing. It, my, my dad cannot understand what social media is. It, yes, he's on Facebook, but really, to a larger sense, he's, not, he's just using it. He does not understand how it can best be regulated, what kind of algorithms can be written, how you can code in something for your region right, right. that would ensure that these kind of comments are flagged down on your right. region. So we need people that understand the science of what yes, happens yes. in social media to they be able to, to advise Let's those put putting this together. So Tunde says, the problem here is simple, it's abuse. Given Nigerian anything, and abusing is inevitable. Twitter or no Twitter, some people are still naive and will abuse whatsoever, just like the Nigerian actress pulling her in the name of recognition. Um, Marcos Michael says, social media in a free speech community that cannot be held accountable if its platform is used mischievously. If the American state can hold one of their own accountable, what are we fusing about? Mm. One cannot love a child more than his mother. Mm. People should be tracked and held responsible for whatever they put on social media. Bukola's a good team says social media should be regulated. Too many half truths flying around. Yeah. You know? All right, so we well, have yeah, to run. Maria yeah, says, how has the independent INEC done so far? Margaret says, we, li we like what developed countries do, but we fail to put structures in place to yes. make it work like where we are copying. Mm -hmm. it's always, we, we always wait until things scatter, scatter. Then we want to correct it in haste. That should not be the this case. This one is serious. Oyewu Maria Azomta says, do you also consider the insecurity attached to full representation of one's bio data out there? Okay, we have to go on this one, but you see, I have, a, I have an article here. It says that Texas Supreme Court rules Facebook can be held liable for sex trafficking. So Texas highest court has ruled that the Facebook can actually be held liable for these issues abuse. of sexual yes. trafficking. And we're forgetting that this social media is also being used for illicit drugs within yeah. Nigeria. Yes. These are other parts of it that yes. we have discussed about. So when we say regulation, it. we say regulation, we, we mean not that we, we, it's, not it's, about, it's not just it's not about the and slander. It's about no. there are so many other so industries using this platform. So we're not going to break. When we come back, okay. we'll talk yeah. about it more. Okay, please. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. With us. So, as I was saying before the break, I mean, I'd like to even refer to the uh, Texas Supreme Court's phrase of how they termed the, um, on the Facebook. They said mm -hmm. it is an act of um, lawless no man's land. Mm -hmm. So, they're saying that the, the, the websites, the social media platforms have become these lawless no man's land where anything well, goes. West. So, as much as oh, we are this. talking about the personal parts, I'm also want us to look at the fact that. These same platforms are used for illicit drugs. We've seen cookies being sold on mm -hmm. social media. Yes. We've seen uh, um, sex trade going we've, on we've still seen, on these um, social media platforms. So the point is, when we talk about regulation, mm -hmm. it's not just about um, gagging. No, and that's what about. the government is saying. We're not trying to gag you. We're also trying to put some kind of laws to well, ensure yeah. that why we can we, actually... Why we, don't believe, why we don't believe the government is yes. because 
a minister woke up one day yes. and tweeted, you are suspended, and the place was suspended, and we are still suspended till now. Right. It is that, the fact that the government itself mm. has not built trust right. in the way they have done their processes ah, so totally far. Fantastic. So yeah. we already mentioned earlier, and, and the solution is here. There are algorithms you can code words out. Facebook cannot say they don't know the, that the algorithms cannot pick out where someone is selling those they are funny cookies That's or whatever. No, no. So no, let, me, let, me, let, not let that me fly on. Yes. Algorithm. Mm -hmm. I know you keep saying that, mentioning that, but it is, of course, not all encompassing. It's something that's still being worked on, even in mm -hmm. America. So those algorithms work maybe for some certain words and mm -hmm. pick them out. But sometimes the messages are still being sent. Some people have found a way to put a um, full stop in between them. So we need yeah. to do much more than those yeah, algorithms. We need as, to have as quality. Besides that, we knew that Twitter had some of this algorithm already done. Mm -hmm. And we had eight speech flying yes, to the extent that the federal government, I, like I said, should have acted. It was the timing of their acting that it concerned me, uh, President's speech. That's why we are quarreling about mm -hmm. this. Yeah. But they should have acted a Re long time ago and tried to policy prevent this. So, let me ask this you this question. Because this this is this for mm -hmm. government, that we have. how best, therefore, aside from the fact that we want to involve civil society, how else can the government try to instigate this process such that it gets the buy-in of the, of, the, of the populace? So... The Minister for Information and all the other agencies on Daimu's business is it to win people's MCC. trust, must, must focus on the issues and leave their personal agendas. So you stop responding to everything that you know we have and let people see the dangers, honestly, sincerely, not to as, as against government, but against individuals and how damaging uh, free speech, unregulated free speech has been. Because... We, so they, they will come and say, we have our laws. We, have, we know we have our laws. We know our laws require investigation. We know they require certain things. And they eat dead ends because of some protection that these platforms give other people. So we need to open it up. All right, let me wrap up on this for a second because I want us to go speeches. into the issue of press. So mm -hmm. as many of you know, the National Assembly, at least one of the lawmakers in the National Assembly is currently seeking to amend the Nigeria Press Council Act such that journalists and media houses can be fined 250,000 naira and about 10 million naira, respectively, by the NPC for infraction. Join us on the show now to discuss it is the president of the Nigerian Guild of um, Editors, uh, Mr. Mustafa Issa. Welcome to the show, sir. Good morning. Good to have you on the show. Right, so... Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come to you, because I also want to even hear your views on this issue of social media. But the issue concerning the um, Press Council Act review, uh, being brought up by, I think it was Honorable Shegun Odebumi in the National Assembly. Yeah. Although some of his colleagues have said, ah, he's on his own, no, we don't know mm. what he's talking about. So, you know, but there have been quite a lot of responses from um, your, the Guild of Editors have said something, the NUJ have said something. Um, in your view, because when I read the existing act, it wasn't so totally far from what is being proposed. I mean, unless maybe I read it wrong. But the issue okay. I heard people had was the fact that mm. they must defer to the Minister of Information yeah. to get approvals for certain, um, the chairmanship and other um, various the sections within the, uh, the, with the act. And I'm thinking when I saw the original document, it was, it was quite similar. So my view, my question therefore to you, sir, what exactly is your reservation concerning this amendment? Yeah, thanks for that question. And let me let you know that first and foremost, even the the idea tried to amend, the matter is, is already in court. We went to challenge that in court. As we speak, another matter is at the Supreme Court. That is why the law has not been applied. We challenge it in court, you know, because of the provision in that act. Mm -hmm. They are not trying to even amend and add more obligation provisions. For instance, they are not asking that the Minister of Information to now be the person to approve the code of conduct for journalists in this country. It's not done anywhere, well, even, even in Iraq. It's not done. Who approves code of conduct for, for medical doctors? Is it the Minister of Health? It's not done anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, now they say for you to seek to, to, to uh, practice as a newspaper and all that, you have to seek, you have to apply to do this, pass through this process and all that. Let me tell you. When you want to make a law, do your research properly. Check what is happening in other clients, I mean, in other countries. I find out. In Ghana, I don't have to go to Western countries. In Ghana, here, yeah, 
Now, the guaranteed freedom of the, of the media in their constitution. Let me tell you what it, what it says. You know, impediment to the establishment of private press or media, no law requiring any person to obtain license as a prerequisite to the establishment of operation of Ibisoba in Ghana. Let me ask. Are Ghana be set on fire because of this? No. We're talking about the media. You cannot ask a government appointee to regulate me, to tell me what to do, to now determine whether what I have published is in national interest or not. Because he's a politician. Because if you allow him to do that, it will be used to guard the critical media. But let me say this. Check the future of Nigerian media. Even under the military, we didn't have this type of law. We forced the military to stand still. Some of our colleagues lost their lives. So we have this a shot. But you know what? Nobody will ever give you freedom. We are always fought for our freedom and we'll keep fighting for it. If they go ahead to fight the way it is, we are going to go to court and challenge you. Will you legal me? Or the other they okay. want to amend this already in court. This one is what person will challenge you. If they pass it the way it is. Right. Okay, let me get a few more questions. So, go ahead. Um I'll, one thing yeah. is I feel I feel concerned because there is, is as if media is being attacked on every form of media. Um, but what would you say is the reason for this law being put in place? Is there any way you can justify the idea that would make someone want to put this law in place right now? You know what? We, we, we are not averse to the regulation. So what you say, for instance, you have to a minister should not be the person that will not determine for us our code of conduct. Then uh, if there's any infraction, you'll be fined 10 million, 20 million, and all that, and all that. Look, why can't you have an independent body? If you feel, for instance, law of libel is there. Law of defamation is there. If you publish fake news, for instance, it's part of, if, what have you to do? say, I did it. That's libel. The law is already there in this, in this country. Why don't you use that law to take me to court and prove the case in court? I mean, I Wait, have Mr. Cases where... Mr. Issa, let me, let me be sure that we're on the yes. same page. Because what I read yes. is mm -hmm. that a committee will be, a council will be constituted that will involve mm -hmm. part of men mm -hmm. from the Guild of Editors, NUJ, mm -hmm. um, I think Civil mm -hmm. Society of Bilal, so citizens. I mean, they, they put a, mm -hmm. the, the whole gamut of people that will be involved. So it's not like the Minister of Information will have direct authority. No. So why mm -hmm. is that still a problem? Mm -hmm. Who will approve that committee? Majority of the members will be government appointees. Let me refer to Ghana again. Ghana have what we call uh, the National Media Council. Better groups are supposed to, they are supposed to bring in representatives. You know, the lawmakers have to bring, bring two. Majority are from the private sector. After being appointed, they among themselves will elect a chairman. But in our case, the president will appoint the chairman or the recommendation of the minister, and they said that the board is going to be a mere advisory body. So, as I will you, we have the same. That, that's why today the board of NBC cannot control the decision of NBC. The same thing they want to do now with, with the NBC, like the press council. All right. So, the board will just be looking at things are happening. Let me go on a break. Let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. staying with us. So we're still on this issue of the review of the uh, Press Council Act. Uh, joining the conversation now is the Deputy Lead Speaker, House of um, Representative, uh, Honorable Peter Apatasen. Good morning, sir. Are you there? Yes, good morning. I'm here. Yes, good to have you to join the conversation. Um, yeah, my pleasure. Given the fact that many Nigerians seem opposed to this new uh, proposed bill. What are your thoughts on it? Because we've even said, seen that many members of the House are almost saying that they are not totally in support 
of Honorable um, Odebumi on this, on this um, presentation of the bill. What are your views on it? Well, usually the, the House is divided on uh, issues like this because we don't always, uh, we don't all look at things from the same perspective. Whoever is saying yes has a reason for saying yes, and whoever is saying no has a reason for saying no. Uh, you know, but the progress of a bill depends majorly on the input from members of the public. Right. Because ultimately, the final decision of the House will take into consideration public opinion on the subject matter because we make laws for the public, for Nigerian people, not for ourselves. Mm. Okay, go ahead, Nima. So, uh, sir, we are looking at, uh, yeah. I am looking at the independence of um, the, the, the um, council as it is now, but with this amendment that we are seeing, is there no other way that the council can be structured and be independent of appointees of... Okay. Well, you know, the essence of public hearing is for professionals and industry players yeah. to come to the House or Senate, as the case may be, to present their professional views and to, to guide the legislature on how best to go about it. But if that opportunity is lost, there is still, you know, a provision for people to come around with their professional views in writing to present to the House. Mr. Speaker has led the Ninth Assembly in such a way that the Ninth Assembly is very concerned about public opinion and therefore makes every opportunity available for members of the public and professionals you know, to, to, to come in and make it at any level of the, the, or the at any point of the uh, process of lawmaking. I think that these views can still be properly converged. Okay, that's good. Yeah, so um, sometimes I wonder that when we get some of these um, proposed um, propositions to the House, are there some that you could just call like dead on arrival? Because um, I'm Sorry, looking. I'm, I'm are there some? Clearly. Okay, are there some bills when they come in, when they are proposed, you look at them and say this is dead on arrival? Because I'm looking at this um, new um, amendment proposal and it's saying the powers of the Minister for Information, and it looks like we're not asking the Minister for Information to be involved in the nitty gritty of chasing people, licensing people, prosecuting people. Are there no other things that he's doing already? And the original um, act is self-sufficient, in my opinion. When you look at it, what do you think? Well, the issue of dead on arrival, I don't think it makes sense to me. Nothing is dead on arrival. It all depends on the issues, like I said at the beginning. And when people take advantage of the opportunity to make their input, it can then guide, you know, uh, those who are involved in the process of uh, making laws, you know, but to think that anything is dead on arrival, as far as I'm concerned, is uh, is not proper. Okay, you I know? have I have one to rephrase. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm not rephrasing. It's good that he responded that way. But secondly, I need to understand when you already have one that covers everything, and then you're asking that the minister for information is involved in getting licensing, pr uh, prosecuting, checking uh, for print, finding people. So we're asking, when you see that compared to the original bill, what do you think, personally? <laughs> As a person, I think that at any point in time, law reviews. Okay. And if, in the process of reviewing law, mm -hmm. the public thinks that Certain content of the proposal offends, you know, uh, then they should come up with alternatives. You understand? I think I don't, I don't think that it is okay. wrong to empower All the right. minister, you know, to perform those functions. Okay, great. Yeah? So let me let me let me come back to the president of the Guild of Editors. He's back with us, Mr. Musa uh, Isa. Are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Now, let me help me understand this. Because we are regulated by the 
of the National Broadcasting Code. Broadcasting Commission. And, 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 and the, the, the yeah, Commission yeah. also, and mm. that we have the Broadcasting mm. Code, yeah, which guides what we do. Yeah. And mm. we, 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 to get licensing, you need to go to the federal government, to the Minister of Information. These are things that we know. You get, we get fined for things we say or not say that does not align to, um, to the handbook. So we are sort of regulated. And, and so for me, I'm still not understanding what the issues are, because not, not what they need. Is it that the press was never really regulated? The only broadcasters were regulated, regulated because what I'm hearing doesn't really sound new on the side of, for, for those of us that have been working under the Broadcasters Commission. What is so different? Please, that's, that's, my, that's my question. Let me, please, read the history of the Nigerian media. The newspaper predicted the Nigeria as a country. Okay. The newspaper was established in the 80s. In the 1880s also, in, in Abel Buta. The broadcaster has been regulated until IBB, you know, they regulated it with a decree. I mean, in 1980 something. Yeah. The amount of fear that the broadcast can be used to incite the public. The government still has that fear today. That is why today the broadcast media is overstated. They still have that fear. You know, I got told today in my elevator that in Ghana today, we, they have a, 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 um, a section in their constitution on freedom of the media that there should be no law requiring any person to obtain license as a prerequisite to establish a newspaper. You see, when you want to make a law, as, as a honorary word, as a lawmaker, please do your research, do your due diligence, share what is happening in other clans, in other countries. Otherwise, you, you'll be retrogressive. This law is taking us backwards. Why other colleagues are moving forward, this one, we are going backwards. How can you ask a minister to approve the code of order for journalists? Let's all let you know that that is done. Let me tell you, if the government means well for us in the, in the industry, as we as said, they want to um, put the bill together. You call the critical stakeholders. There's an issue in your sector. How do you resolve it? We put hands together. Then, what of all will not formulate the best way out, the, the bill? Then you, talk, you sit somewhere, put it together, and you say we should cover the public hearing. And let me tell you, we will never invite that room, we never, I will never invite somebody who invited me. I will, we will not, they, they didn't write to us, we all just heard about it, just three hours in the public hearing. I, I was not aware, and I asked my police in the energy and all that, they were not aware. But the brother they are praying and that they just quickly rush to that place. To, to, to attend. How, if you meet well, why should that happen? Please ask the other people. Did you write to me? Nobody wrote to me. I'm so aware of it. Does it did you meet well for us? Let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're still on this issue of the Nigerian Press Council Act review, and uh, Nima had a question. Yes. Where, Hunter? Uh, just to clarify, is there no bo way that the bodies that are already existing as the National Union of Justice? Hello, um, Mr. Mustafa, are you still there? Yes, yes, I'm still here. Okay, yes, go ahead. So the um, National Union of Jun uh, Journalists, your body as a body, can't can the appointment of the council members be recommended by you for the president to appoint? Because as it you is know, now, what is done in that bill is that, you know, his, his appointment will be based on the recommendation of the Minister for Information. And I find that, you know, something that speaks uh, of yeah. dependence and control. Okay. There are some bodies that are, that are supposed... Can I go on? Yes. Go ahead, please. Okay, yeah. There are some bodies that are, that are supposed to... Um, um, provide the security to the to the board or the or the NPC, Nigerian Press Council. The Nigerian Press Council is there, the publishers uh, association is there, then uh, the NEG and some other body. And, and they say the lawyer. If, if, you know, for let me take the case of Ghana, for instance. There are bodies that are supposed to present people, not recommended by the group, by the government, but by those independent bodies. You know, including the Ghana uh, um, uh, uh, Bar Association. 
after they have recommended their members to the board, the board members will meet and elect their chairman independently. But in, in Nigeria, they say the president has to appoint or recommendation of the minister. And you know what happens in this country. Once you are appointed, people feel that you are you hold a to the president. Yeah. This is media for God's sake. That's how today we have to work with the NBC. The NBC, the DG, case order, directive, from the government. Even even the thing flash up in court, they will impose fines because they feel that you are not you are not you are too too hard on, on, on the government and all that. And it has just a problem. You know, so we, we don't want that. This is the media. We we'll say we should not go back accountable to the people in the abridge of the constitution that right. we have today. Let me let me get some more questions. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Okay. okay. Okay, sir. So there are a few things that I see that the council may have some objections to, and I'm a bit um, concerned why, which is, you call it the criminalization of the operations of media outfit, where the act is, the amendment is saying that whoever sells news, publishes, or prints without documentation will be fined. Why is that a problem? Shouldn't, the, shouldn't every um, print um, house have proper um, documentation and licensing before they go out to before they start printing no. um, papers. Secondly, we also, there's also the um, fake news part. You know, constantly here, we're, also, we're talking about regulating um, news. And the government is saying that those who have been found guilty of, um, you know, carrying, carrying fake news will be prosecuted as well, will be fined as well. Why is that a problem for the council? No, let me talk about your life, sir. I just read to you today at the Kuwa Institute of the Ghana Constitution that Ada has eliminated law requiring newspapers to register. But you may have a company where you can float the newspaper. There are laws that is the operation of newspapers all over the world, even in Nigeria. The law of libel, um, defamation, they are there. If you make if you have that infraction, you go in for it. There are laws already there. We don't have a problem. We don't use existing laws. We are always looking for new ones. That will never use the men. Even the issue of fake news, for instance. If I report that TVC has been shot or has gone under, and it is not true, that is not as injured the, 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 the reputation of TVC. TVC can go to court under the law of libel and defamation. Has anybody tried that? No, we are looking for new law. I have never faced news. I will never. In my own station, we protect uh, news before we before, before, before we broadcast them. You know what I'm saying is that has anybody gone to court other than the commission to 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 to, to uh, challenge fake news? We are not on that. Okay. We are looking for new law. Right. We are looking for new law. Have we right. tried the existing one? All right. Let me get a few more questions in for you. Go ahead. Okay, so, um, uh, for me, I feel that historically, press, print press was a way for many people to express themselves. Um, and considering the trends worldwide, there is a dying trend of print medias going down and um, people moving and migrating from print into social media, which is already even already happening in Nigeria. Would you say that this is a law to preempt that? Or would you say that the print media is already looking towards migrating uh, um, effectively into using social media to propagate their information as opposed to printing? And how is the print media in Nigeria preparing for the future of people not buying papers anymore? No, um, yeah, um, even all over the world, right? there have been big challenges about people in the US and could have migrated that have stopped uh, printing. They are now completely online. Uh, but let me make it very clear here. There is a difference between social media and uh, online media. Social media, maybe Facebook, uh, WhatsApp, um, Twitter. I mean, am I permitted to use what Twitter in Nigeria and all that? Those are social media guys. And in those, in those social media, there are no gatekeepers. Mm. But we have online media. They are, they are different. Today in Nigeria, print, print uh, media. They also have their own and fashion. In fact, even TV stations, TV stations, they have their online fashion. Everybody has gone online now. We know those ones. 
They are trained journalists, they are trained editors. That is why today, if I want to go and consult any news, I can go to Post Online, go to the, the Nation Online, go to uh, uh, Tribune Online. So All right. I know Mr. Mustafa, let me, let me ask you this. Yeah. The, 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 the honorable member who just left, uh, Honorable Peter Akwatasin, has said that when bills like this are brought to the House, what they do is bring in experts, stakeholders, to come for the public hearings, to share their views, because nobody's saying they're perfect. They're, they're asking for your opinion. So my question, therefore, is have you been able to make yourself available to the National Assembly um, for, to express them. your own professional views on the issue of this amendment? Please ask them. What we hear is they didn't invite the critical stakeholder. I just get three hours to the... To the, to, the, to the public hearing. Nobody invited us. That's why you have a sinister motive. Please, confess for them if they ever, they didn't write to me as the president of the guild. I didn't get a letter. You can very point. The, the, the publisher didn't get a letter. Everybody didn't get a letter. We just heard that it's the public hearing. If you want, if you mean well for us, write to well, me. Well, let me, let me so ask you. I prepare. Let me ask you a dumb okay. question. Let me ask you a dumb question yeah. because yeah. I'm in the broadcasting circle and I know that. All our NBC code, I mean, our, our, NB, our NBC code, you see, is reviewed by the stakeholders. It took years. I mean, the current one we have right now took years of meetings, discussion, uh, evaluation. And eventually, they got the approval, eventually, from the Minister of Information. So I, I feel that we, the, the circle okay. I am in is well regulated. So I mean, I find it kind of bizarre why press is... Throwing, I would be throwing tantrums on this issue because I feel that yes, you know, we don't want we don't want gagging absolutely. But are you saying that the, the Minister of Information should not in any way have any responsibility to your own print uh, press um, um, circle? Is that what you're saying? First and foremost, you know, to use the word tantrum to describe our reaction, I think it's a misnomer. You know, the number two. Are you sure that the current NBC code was the product of, uh, of the, uh, the discussion by the stakeholders? Even the board of NBC has declared the current NBC code as illegal. What turned out? The chairman of the board said there were, there were no meetings. Somebody just came up with this. Please Google it and find out. His name is um, Bibli, the current the chairman yeah. of the board of the NBC. Right. He attends the media in Abuja. It's only the current NBC code. They have the same are not involved. Please yeah. do not decide properly. Right, right. So they want, they want to do the same thing here right now. Even as I speak now, the current MBC code is illegal because the stakeholders are not involved. Okay. All right. And so do the same thing now to, 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 to the press council bill. You know, so we are, we are not going to rest. We are going to meet on Thursday. The NPO will be meeting in Lagos. I mean, the, the, the publishers, the, 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 the NUG and, and the deal. We're meeting in Abuja here. I mean, in Lagos. To call with a common, a common position on okay. this matter, we are going to we are going to take a look at the entire bill, not just the NPC the, the, the uh, bill, also the NPC because my member membership calls across uh, both um, the print, broadcast, and online media. So okay. I also have I'm a broadcaster, you know, from Silver Bear, for instance. So I know what is happening. Okay. So we are going to sit and have an alternative to this bill. In, in other so words, our issue. In other enemies. words, sir, our issue is the assuming uh, control of the Ministry of Information over our over our um, industry and our um, freedom of speech and expression. Exactly. That's the real issue. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. So it, 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 it's something that is worth talking about. All right. Thank you very much, sir. So uh, it was important for us to hear your views on this. Thank you very much for your your thoughts. Uh, uh, Raya, uh, and this seemingly, this the the ad advocacy from the press, the complaints from the NBC mirrors the complaints of many Nigerians on the social media bill as well. So I don't think Nigerians are against regulation. We know that there's need for regulation. It is the fear of abuse of power and the fear of our inability to express ourselves, that we are in democracy, but we will not be able to live in democracy. And we, most of us know people in China. I know people, someone that lives in China, and it is a, it, it is a case of you can't even, you can't ex, you can't even say if, it, if you say you can be arrested, you can be taken into a camp and never seen again. Oh, well, and this, this, this thing starts subtle. It, it starts in a subtle way, and the next thing you realize that you, you will now see a crime happening and you are only looking. You are unable to speak.
speak up concerning and we don't mm -hmm. want to get yeah. to that point. So we're so shouting now for... me, what I find interesting is that there will be a public hearing on this and the president of the Nigerian Guild of unaware. Editors is unaware and not part of the conversation. So that's what I was talking about, that when you're going to have anything to do with social media, print, um, freedom of expression, you need to involve the stakeholders. You can't do this by yourselves and expect people to trust mm. the motive. You know. yeah. What you were saying about the NBC, I do recall that... Mm. There were several meetings that I, even I attended back in, back in the, a few years ago. Uh, we had in Abuja, we had in Enugu, we, you know, where we discussed this NBC code review. And they told all the stations at the time, send in your recommendations, which we did. We sent in our recommendations at the time. Um, but I think eventually when the code came out, was there was lost. that issue of, okay, this is not what we said we wanted. You know? So there's always mm. that distrust of, okay, where is this coming from? So that, that's where he's saying that even the current, the, the, the current code that we are, we are saying is not totally what the stakeholders actually agreed. So there's also an issue of distrust. What are you trying to do exactly? You want to have full control of media, which you're saying is the fourth no, realm. You cannot, you cannot control. It's supposed to check. Yeah, it's, it's supposed, supposed to, to check. check yes. government, yeah. You want to release whatever dependence the, the old act had put, such that you know, the ministry controls certain areas. Just for that expand and give them, if the mini, ju, uh, judiciary is asking for autonomy today, so everybody should be independent of as much as possible of government. Yeah. I just want to say happy birthday to the Minister for Works and Housing. Oh. Uh, we uh, forgot to now. Action but... Governor. Lagos the former. He's not a governor. He's a minister now. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I know. We appreciate the you, sir. Governor. Well done. Okay. He's minister. What else is he? Very, very yeah. everything. He's a friend of the family. Yeah. He's a friend, oh, of, friend of the, the show. Yeah. He's a friend of the house. Friend of the house. Very yes. Very accommodating and very responsive. Happy birthday. Mm. Thank happy you, sir. Happy birthday. Okay, anything else, ladies? Is yes, every link to the internet can be traced through IP address. Nigeria should build on its own cyber security agency to combat abuse of social media. Mm. Twitter or Facebook yeah. will not do what we should do ourselves. Mm -hmm. The right to freedom of speech is however, however remains sacrosanct. Mm. I think we, we need to build our own Thank infrastructure. Thank you very much, ladies. Okay, that's all we can take on the show today. See you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye for now.